Hi, I'm Pam and I'm here to talk about video games. Today I'm reviewing a game that represents the resurrection of the Castlevania series, not in name, but in spirit. It's Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Bloodstained Ritual of the Night was developed by Artplay and released for all major platforms in June 2019. It's the result of a Kickstarter headed up by Koji Igarashi, who was a programmer on Castlevania Symphony of the Night and served as lead producer on the series from Castlevania Chronicles onward. The Kickstarter raised a record-breaking $5.5 million, with fans eagerly wanting a continuation of the series, even if the Castlevania name wouldn't be used. You play Miriam, who is a Shardbinder. She can fuse with demonically charged crystals that come from demons she defeats to gain new powers. This creates the basis for the incredible amount of abilities you'll gain access to as you progress. Bloodstain takes a bit of a kitchen sink approach to its mechanics. There are dozens of weapons of multiple types and even more abilities from five different categories of shards. You can level those up as well as Miriam herself. There's gold and shops to spend it at, hundreds of inventory items, and tomes to boost your stats. You want crafting and food recipes? You got them. Quests? There are many. Combat techniques to find and master? Those are here as well. You can even grow your own food and find a character in the castle who will change Miriam's hairstyle and appearance. Honestly, it's a lot, but while I feel some of these features could have been safely left out of the game, they don't take away from how much fun the combat and exploration are. Miriam controls well, especially after you get the double jump ability a little ways in. She runs at a decent speed, has a move to quickly dash backwards like Alucard in Symphony, and I'm happy to say that Bloodstained has escaped the curse of the awkward Castlevania stairs. The number of different weapons and abilities you'll get access to means you can really tailor combat to your own preferences. Daggers are great if you prefer speedy attacks, while greatswords are powerful but require you to be more careful with your swings. Spears give you range in a small, targeted direction, while whips are great on enemies who are low to the ground. As for the shards, you can equip one of each type, and there are so many that I don't even think I tried them all. I got the most use out of the Conjure Shards, as they tended to be fire and forget type spells, conjuring a demon for a short amount of time to do damage. Summon Ghost was my go-to, though later in the game I started appreciating Welcome Company, which surrounds Miriam with paintings that both protect and do damage. There are also directional shards that you need to target, like fireballs, acid jets, and arrows, and familiars who will fight with you permanently. There is a way to save certain sets of shards or equipment and swap between them, but it was a little unwieldy, so when I found a combo I liked, I tended to stick with it. What I liked most about the combat was how I felt encouraged to use my special abilities. The mana that powers them continually replenishes, so I never felt like I had to save my spells for special occasions. Because of this, fighting always involves a dynamic mix of actions. Combat looks as good as it feels, the spell effects are varied and visually interesting, and the animations look great. But it's the enemy design that really makes Bloodstain stand out. I often found myself laughing out loud, surprised at the things I was encountering. There's a giant demon cat who slaps at you with its paw, a beefy shovel knight, and a woman just shredding on a fire-spouting guitar. Huge, disembodied terrier heads will chase you, and flying pigs will inflate and gracefully float through the air. It seems like the artists were having a lot of fun here. The rest of the visuals, though, are oddly incongruous. The detailed, high-res backgrounds and the cell-shaded looking characters look like they come from different games. And while the demon designs definitely work for me, when we get a close-up of any of the human characters, they're all rather ugly. The music, on the other hand, is great, and familiar-sounding. 
It's composed by Michiru Yamane, who wrote the music on several previous Castlevania games, including Bloodlines and Symphony of the Night. The most satisfying thing was exploring the castle and systematically filling out the map. It is a good map that is easy to navigate and lets you note areas of interest. Different areas of the castle are wildly different in terms of their appearance and the enemies they contain. There are environments like your basic gothic castle filled with ghosts and annoying bats, deserts with skeletal dragons, underwater levels teeming with tentacled monsters, ice zones, and of course some gear-turning clockwork towers. The map is dense, full of winding corridors, secret breakable walls, and areas you just can't quite reach yet, making you yearn for the next ability that will let you explore further. Doors that lead to bosses or new sections of the castle are visually distinct, which was something I was grateful for. It meant no stumbling into a boss fight while I was low on health, ages after I'd last saved. There are also save rooms in the immediate vicinity of each boss, meaning little repetition is required when you die and have to try again. Teleport rooms, which let you fast travel, also populate each area. On normal mode, the game isn't overly challenging. Though some of the boss fights do take a lot of precision, the abundance of healing items available to you, both in the form of potions and meals you can prepare for yourself, means you can heal up and power through a lot of mistakes. Once you've beaten the game on normal, or if you use a cheat, you can unlock higher difficulties. When you need a break or are unsure of where to head next, there's a small hub area you can return to to talk to the different characters you've met. They'll often give you hints on where to go next, as well as let you stock up on items or do some crafting. The activities in this area don't do the game's pace any favors. The quest you can get to kill a certain number of demons or give an old lady a mystery dish she's craving are rote and monotonous. You can get some decent items as rewards, but these are not an interesting part of the game, and you have to repeat the same conversation each time you accept or turn in a quest. Help Pastor Trevor rest in peace! Kill those murderers dead! While playing this on Xbox One, I encountered occasional performance issues. The game has a tendency to slow down and stutter during the animation where Miriam absorbs a new shard. Performance during the actual gameplay was fine for the most time, with the exception of one boss late in the game. A certain ability he uses turns the game into a slideshow. Bloodstain tries to do a little too much, and includes many elements I don't think added much to the game. Huge amounts of inventory, repetitive quests, the story… However, it was still immensely playable, kept me engaged for many hours, and had one of the most satisfying maps. I didn't want to stop playing until I uncovered 100% of it. I think fans of Symphony of the Night will be pleased with this successor, and even those who aren't Castlevania connoisseurs will find a lot of fun here. Cinder and blight veil the air, bring the night, and your eyes they close, sweet The Ritual of the Night Kickstarter also resulted in another game, Curse of the Moon. Check out my review of that if you prefer a game that emulates the earliest Castlevania games. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.